going to, like, do a video about Newton's laws of motion because I have to do a video project for Miss Harris. Well, I don't have to do a video project. I could do a writing assignment, but who cares about writing when you have, like, a camera or something, right? So I'm deciding to make a video. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate Newton's, like, first law, second law, and third law of motion by extreme biking. So, yeah. Let's first off is Newton's first law of motion. Newton's first law of motion is stated as an object in motion tends to stay in motion and an object at rest tends to stay at rest unless acted upon by, by another force. This can also be called the law of inertia because inertia is actually where an object tends to stay in motion when it's acted on by a force. So I'm actually going to show you this force and demonstrate it by extreme biking. But before I do my extreme biking, I have to have my protective gear first. Like, my awesome Pedro wig and these protective sunglasses so nothing doesn't get in my eyes. Okay, what I'm actually going to do is come down this big hill right here, ride down really fast, and then hit this wheelbarrow which is barricaded by this whatever it is on that side. So, yeah. Let's do this. Whoa. Let's watch it again. That was my example of Newt's first law. See how my body was like wanting to keep in motion when I hit even when I hit the wheelbarrow? So yeah. <laughs> The second law explains how an object will change velocity when it's pushed and pulled. Alright, so to test out Newton's second law, we're going to do an experiment. Right, to test out Newton's second law, we're going to place this trike bike thing on the ground, and then I'm going to hit hit the um, trike bike thing with um, going 6 miles an hour. And then we're going to see um, the effects of that compared to the effects of this trike bike thing with more mass. So let's see what we get. Alright, now we're going to add more mass to this little tricycle bike thing and then we're going to hit it with the same force but we're going to see what effect it has on it when the mass is greater. See how the bike trike thing with more mass went less farther than the bike with less mass? That's because when the net force divided by the mass, that equals acceleration. And since that had more mass divided by the net force, that equals less acceleration. So it didn't go as far. For Newton's third law, it stated, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Alright, now to show you an example of Newton's third law, I'm going to show you what happened one day when I was just riding along, and then, there he was. Ah, uh -huh. it's a little scarecrow. I think I could probably run over it and go past it. <laughs> He'll never get past me. Oh. What? No! How did you get past the scarecrow? Uh, 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 oh, I can't get past him. Forces always come in pairs. Equal and opposite reaction force pairs. The size and the force 
of the bike equals the size and the force of the scarecrow. But the direction of the force of the bike is opposite the direction of the force of the scarecrow. But since neither the bike or the scarecrow moved when the bike was trying to get past the scarecrow, that means that their forces were balanced. We've done Newton's first law, we've done Newton's second law, and we've done Newton's third law of motion. You know what we do now? It's sandwich time. Oh yeah. Well, I hope you like my project, but now it's the end. So, see ya.